129. To quote William Carpenter, why in the name of common sense should observers have to fix their telescopes on solid stone bases so that they should not move a hair's breadth if the earth on which they fix them moves at the rate of 19 miles in a second? Indeed, to believe that 6,000 million 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 tons is rolling, surging, flying, darting on through space forever with a velocity compared with which a shot from a cannon is a very slow coach with such unerring accuracy that a telescope fixed on granite pillars in an observatory will not enable a lynx-eyed astronomer to detect a variation in its onward motion of the thousandth part of a hair's breadth is to conceive a miracle compared with which all the miracles on record put together would sink into utter insignificance since we can, in middle north latitudes, see the North Star on looking out of a window that faces it, and out of this very same corner of the very same pane of glass in the very same window all the year round, it is proof enough for any man in his senses that we have not made any motion at all and that the Earth is not a globe. 130. From Earth Not a Globe by Samuel Robotham. Take two carefully bored metallic tubes not less than six feet in length and place them one yard asunder on the opposite sides of a wooden frame or a solid block of wood or stone so adjust them that their centers or axes of vision shall be perfectly parallel to each other now direct them to the plane of some notable fixed star a few seconds previous to its meridian time let an observer be stationed at each tube and the moment the star appears in the first tube let a loud knock or other signal be given to be repeated by the observer at the second tube when he sees the same star. A distinct period of time will elapse between the signals given. The signals will follow each other in very rapid succession, but still the time between is sufficient to show that the same star is not visible at the same moment by two parallel lines of sight when only one yard asunder. A slight inclination of the second tube towards the first tube would be required for the star to be seen through both tubes at the same instant. Let the tubes remain in their positions for six months, at the end of which time the same observation or experiment will produce the same results. The star will be visible at the same meridian time without the slightest alteration being required in the direction of the tubes, from which it is concluded that if the Earth had moved one single yard in an orbit through space, there would at least be observed the slight inclination of the tube which the difference in position of one yard had previously required but as no such difference in the direction of the tube is required, the conclusion is unavoidable, that in six months a given meridian upon the Earth's surface does not move a single yard, and therefore that the Earth has not the slightest degree of orbital motion.